Now, I'd like to start presenting Mobile Government Consortium International. We are based in the UK and we are a non-profit organization. It has been established three, four years ago and the purpose of the establishment was to promote mobile government and to monitor the mobile government developments internationally. Now one of the prime activities that we do is to connect people and resources. We have a large number of resources in terms of books, reports, and expertise. We have fellows and we also have a number of members who are also experts in various fields in mobile business and e-government. <coughs> We started doing research for public sector and private sector, but we are slowly moving into providing advisory services to the private sector and public sector organizations for them to successfully implement mobile government projects. Now, our main mission is to monitor mobile government developments and use of mobile technologies in mobile society so that the impacts of these mobile technologies are converted into a welfare for the individuals, for the society, and for economies and the government organizations. Can I go to the next slide, please? Okay, I've done that. Can I go to the next slide and the, and the one after? Yeah, thank you. Um, I've just realized one of the mobile government came across some of the work that we have done in Japan with uh, several colleagues when I was teaching in the International University of Japan. Now this is a revised definition of mobile government that we did in year 2003. It is basically use of as it is a strategic approach by the government for the utilization of mobile technologies, all kinds of mobile technologies in order to enhance e-government efforts so that we can provide benefits to all the stakeholders including citizens, private sector businesses that governments work with and the government organizations themselves because for them to be able to use mobile technologies they have to improve their business processes and how they interact with the citizens. Now it is very young but moving very fast. It has been now recognized field in many countries, although it has stayed at the local level now, but it is slowly moving as part of the strategic approach of the governments in several countries. Now, with the proliferation of the mobile technologies and all these applications being, uh, being used um, in the private sector, government has to follow the trend and therefore e-government has a big pressure, e-government uh, practice has a big pressure on it to, be, to move from a uh, traditional conventional way of providing services into, mo uh, uh, into using these new mobile technologies. So therefore it is an inevitable direction in e-government. Now this is a kind of infrastructure, very familiar to you. E-government is basically using fixed network and connected to desktop PCs. And the e-government applications are open at the central level and several of them maybe at the local level. Sorry, can we go back to one slide? Yeah. No, the, the one after, yeah, thanks. Now, mobile government uses mobile infrastructure, mobile network, wireless networks, and also mobile devices. Not necessarily on phones, mobile phones or smartphones, but tablet PCs and also sometimes laptops. And now, this infrastructure brings in a total new ways of looking at how services to the citizens should be provided. But there will be changes both in the central government applications and also local level. Now, these are a few examples of 
mobile government applications. I'll just go quickly over them because you will see some more details in the talks later. Um, from here, I'll probably pick up, say, mobile payments for the public transport at the local level. Now, as you know, the devices are now becoming more and more uh, being used as a payment system in various um, cities in the world. And MCT's concept and having your mobile phone as a guide when you arrive into a city that you are traveling, it will show you the places to see and maybe some information about safety and other relevant for a, for, 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 for a person visiting a city. I think for the central level, one of the most interesting examples is mobile health. Conventionally, conventionally uh, patient care at home was done when the carrier visits patient's home, they had to fill in lots of forms. And these forms had to be brought back to the computers, desktop computers, and they would be entered and then used afterwards. But now, especially with a project in Denmark, you could use simple smartphone for, uh, for the, when the carrier goes to the patient and then enters the data right there and then even communicates to the doctor if there is a video conversation facilities. And sometimes this is also used for visual, for the, for if the patient has a problem with, say, with the skin, you can use the camera so that the doctor can see that. So these advanced way of using um, Mobile technologies are kind of most promising way that the central government efforts should be directed to. And another important example is probably firefighters in the United Kingdom, in the United States. Now, in one of the areas, the firefighters, when they are called upon for an emergency, before they arrive to the fire, uh, to the site of the fire, they can check all the data related to the buildings, how many people might be expected in the building, and whether there are any other uh, dangerous situation around the building, and what will be the route to, to get there as soon as possible. So this shows a distinctive contribution of mobile technologies, because while the mobile workers, when they are on the move, they can do a lot to help the citizens. Now, mobile government applications and services follow kind of similar trend that we, we see in it, the evolution of the internet or evolution of the e-commerce and mobile business. So basically, some of the applications are information communication services. And then we have participation models where we try to involve uh, citizens in the activities of the government sector, where the, not only government can provide the information and data to the citizens, but the citizens can bring data information back. And then we have a transaction models where governments can do business with the individuals, with the citizens, and also with other um, organizations. And then we have integration models where using the mobile technologies, governments can integrate to other organizations that they are doing business with, such as case of the procurement and, uh, and other, organi uh, other government organization organizations. Now, as you can see, now by the time the technology and the applications evolves and improves better, the services and applications used by the government sectors also evolve. Now, at the bottom level, we have lots of SMS and email-based applications. These are mostly uh, information communication models, but when we go up and higher where we have better technology infrastructure and also database communications we move to transaction and integration models. But of course in the future most of these devices will be more intelligent and more interactive. We will have more of context aware and location based services. I'm moving slightly faster so that um, I can finish this on overview on time but you will see some of the detailed examples.